Up to this point, we've actually already covered every single tougher initial in terms of vocabulary that we've learned. So let's take a closer look and see exactly what those subtle differences are between Chinese and English that make these tougher initials. So let's look at B, D and G first. The thing that makes these slightly different from English in terms of their pronunciation is the fact that they are largely unvoiced in Chinese, whereas they are voiced in English. So if we look at the word bit in English, that's how the typical English B is pronounced. It's voiced from beginning to end, bit, bit. But the B in Chinese is more akin to that of the P in spit, spit. It's more like a p -p -p sort of sound. So let's look at a word we've already learned, father in Chinese, to see this in action. Ba ba, ba ba. It's not ba ba, it's ba ba. It's poppy and light. Now with the D, same sort of deal. So the D in door, 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 it's heavy, it's voiced. Whereas the D in Chinese is more like the T in that of store. It's more like a poppy flick of the tongue on the gums. So let's look at another word. This is the word for younger brother in Chinese. D, 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 D. You can feel that it's not D, D, like the letter D. It's D, 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 D. So it's lighter and more poppy. We can also see it with the letter G. So we can look at this example for older brother in Chinese. Ge -ge. Most family names follow this repetition, this duplication of the character. So the G in English, if you look, for example, if you pronounce the word gil, gil, it's heavy, it's voiced, whereas the, the G in Chinese is more like the K in skill, skill, skill. Ge -ge. Ge -ge. Ge -ge. I've always thought that these three pronunciations kind of sound similar to those guys that do that beatboxing. You know, instead of b, d, g, it's more like b, d, k, b, d, k. So, what about t, p, and k? Well, the thing that's special about these guys is that in Chinese, they are heavily aspirated. And aspiration just means, just means the amount of breath coming out of your mouth as you say the sound and it's less aspirated in English. So you can actually test this by placing your hand in front of your mouth, I guess like about like a fist away from your mouth, and saying these two words one after the other. Ta, tap, ta, tap. Now you should feel more air coming out when you say the Chinese ta. If you're not, then you should try and aspirate a little bit more. Ta, try and breathe out a little bit more when you say it. And this is stronger too. Pa, pa, pat. Pat. And this last example with thirsty in Chinese. Kuh. You just you just feel how much air is coming out, can't you? Kuh. Whereas kill. Kill. Kuh. Subtle difference, but still big to a Chinese person. Certain English speakers can find this concept a little bit tough because especially if you're British English, it's, it, we tend to be quite reserved. We don't like to make too much effort when we speak. Whereas with these certain pronunciations, you've really got a ta pa ke. You've really got to breathe out and enunciate well. And this last one here, it's kind of a unique one. The H is pronounced like the CH in loch or in Hebrew where they say chutzpah. Instead of he, he, it's he. Now you don't have to do that really heavy, especially if you're a lady. Ladies tend to do it a little bit more, well, ladylike, more soft and gentle. So it'd be more like, huh, huh. But it's still that little scratchiness at the beginning. So whether you want to do it, huh, or huh, it's up to you. And this is not something to focus on too heavily or stress about. It's just to try and have in mind and practice every now and then. Just try and keep it in mind when you're practicing your flashcards or when you see any upcoming content with these particular initials used.